The initial encounter between human exploratory vessels and Centauri border patrols occurred near the disputed Nebula K-233. The human vessel, designated as Explorer 5, inadvertently crossed into Centauri-controlled space due to a navigational error. The Zentari patrol unit, consisting of three advanced reconnaissance crafts, engaged the Explorer 5, demanding its immediate withdrawal and threatening with armed response. Captain Lee Sanguin of Explorer 5 communicated the unintentional breach and sought to de-escalate the situation. The dialogue between the two parties was tense, with the Zentari patrol commander asserting the sovereignty of their space and the humans apologizing for the intrusion. Explorer 5 to Centauri Patrol, we acknowledge the breach and request permission to reverse course. This was an unintended error, Captain Nguyen stated. The Centauri commander responded, your presence here is a violation. Leave immediately or we will take necessary actions. Despite the peaceful intentions expressed by Explorer 5, the encounter escalated when a second human vessel, Defender, Two arrived at the scene, interpreting the Zentari patrol's actions as a threat. Defender 2's captain, Marko Petrov, initiated defensive protocols. Defender 2 to Explorer 5, we are here to provide assistance. Zentari units, we are in a defensive stance and request you stand down, Captain Petrov communicated. The situation deteriorated rapidly, resulting in a brief exchange of fire. The conflict led to minor damages to Explorer 5 and 1 Zentari craft. Both sides retreated, but the incident marked the beginning of hostilities. Following the encounter, both the United Earth Coalition and the Zentari Empire held emergency meetings. The Earth's United Defense Council convened to assess the situation, recognizing the potential for escalation. General Sarachin addressed the Council, highlighting the need for preparedness. We must consider this encounter as a potential precursor to broader hostilities. Our defenses must be strengthened and diplomatic channels open to prevent further escalation, General Chin advised. Concurrently, the Zentari High Command interpreted the incident as a deliberate act of aggression, underestimating the human's claim of navigational error. The Zentari leadership, led by Commander Zeeler, prepared for a military response. The humans' actions cannot be overlooked. We will reinforce our border patrols and prepare our forces for any necessary action to protect our sovereignty, Commander Zeeler declared. In the following weeks, both sides increased their military presence in and around Nebula K-233. The tension between the United Earth Coalition and the Zentari Empire grew, with minor skirmishes occurring with increasing frequency. Diplomatic efforts to resolve the issue were unsuccessful as both parties held firm to their stances. The situation escalated when a Zentari fleet advanced towards a human colony near the disputed zone, claiming it as a strategic military response to the perceived human aggression. The United Earth Coalition, viewing this move as a direct threat, deployed its fleet to intercept the Zentari forces. The first major battle occurred in the orbit of the human colony of New Haven. The conflict was intense, with significant casualties on both sides. The battle ended in a stalemate, with the Zentari fleet withdrawing but declaring the area a conflict zone. In the aftermath, the United Earth Coalition declared a state of emergency, mobilizing its entire military and calling for volunteers to defend human territories. News of the battle and the growing conflict spread rapidly across human worlds, sparking a wave of patriotism and a rush to enlist in the defense forces. The Zentari Empire, confident in their technological superiority and military might, officially declared war on the United Earth Coalition. The declaration was broadcasted across Zentari territories, rallying their population for a prolonged conflict. As the war began, both sides prepared for a conflict that would span multiple star systems and involve countless military and civilian lives. The initial encounter near Nebula K-233, which began as a minor misunderstanding, had escalated into a full-scale war that would test the resilience and determination of humanity and the Zentari alike. In the early years of the conflict with the Zentari, humanity faced significant challenges. 
The Zentari's advanced technology and warfare experience gave them a distinct advantage in space and ground engagements. Human colonies near the conflict zones suffered from frequent attacks, leading to considerable civilian casualties and displacement. The United Earth Coalition's Defense Council convened regularly to assess the war's progress and adjust strategies. Despite their efforts, human forces often found themselves outmaneuvered and outgunned in direct confrontations with the Zentari fleets. During one council meeting, Admiral Johnson reviewed the latest reports from the front lines. Our forces are sustaining heavy losses. The Zentari's use of advanced cloaking technology and energy weapons has neutralized our traditional defense systems. We need a new approach to counter their tactics, he stated. The human military began to adapt by focusing on asymmetric warfare strategies, including guerrilla tactics and cyber warfare, to exploit the Zentari's operational rigidities. Special units, such as the 77th Interstellar Special Tactics Squadron, were formed to execute high-risk missions behind enemy lines. Squadron leader Maya Singh briefed her team before a mission to sabotage a Zentari supply depot. This operation is critical. By disrupting their supply lines, we can slow down their advance towards Earth. Remember, stealth and speed are our greatest assets. Get in, plant the charges, and exfiltrate before they know what hit them, she instructed. Despite these efforts, the war's toll on human territories continued to escalate. News outlets broadcasted daily updates on the conflict, often featuring interviews with soldiers and civilians affected by the war. In one such interview, a young soldier named Alex Torres shared his experience from the front lines. Every day is a struggle for survival. But we're not just fighting for ourselves, we're fighting for our families, our homes. We can't afford to lose hope, he said. Civilians across human worlds organized support networks, providing aid to displaced families and volunteering for the war effort. Community leader Elena Martinez coordinated relief efforts on the colony of New Liberty. We've set up shelters and are distributing food and medical supplies. It's a challenging time, but we're coming together as a community to support each other, she explained during a community meeting. The resilience of the human spirit became a beacon of hope amidst the adversity. Stories of bravery and sacrifice from both military personnel and civilians bolstered morale and inspired more individuals to contribute to the war effort in any way they could. On the diplomatic front, the United Earth Coalition sought to form alliances with other species and factions that shared concerns about the Zentari's expansionist policies. Ambassador Lucas Kim led numerous diplomatic missions aiming to secure support and resources for the human cause. During a critical negotiation session with the representatives of the Thelian Assembly, Ambassador Kim emphasized the mutual benefits of an alliance. The Zentari threat affects us all. By joining forces, we can present a united front and significantly enhance our chances of securing peace and stability in the galaxy, he argued. The struggle against the Zentari also led to rapid advancements in human technology. Scientists and engineers worked tirelessly to develop new weapons, defense systems, and propulsion technologies to level the playing field. Dr. Lena Patel, a leading researcher in quantum propulsion, highlighted the breakthroughs achieved by her team. We've made significant progress in developing faster-than-light engines that could outmaneuver Zentari ships. This could be a game-changer for our fleet, she announced at a scientific conference. Despite the daunting challenges, humanity's collective efforts began to yield positive results. The adaptation to guerrilla tactics caused disruptions in Zentari operations and the formation of alliances brought additional resources and strategic advantages to the human side. The tide of the war was far from turning, but the seeds of hope were sown as humanity demonstrated its resilience and adaptability in the face of overwhelming odds. The turning point in the war against the Zentari came with the introduction of a revolutionary strategy developed by a team of military strategists and artificial intelligence experts. The strategy, named Operation Dawnlight, was designed to exploit the Zentari's reliance on centralized command structures and their slower adaptation to unconventional warfare tactics. 
The core of Operation Dawnlight involved a series of coordinated strikes on key Zentari command and control centers combined with widespread misinformation campaigns designed to disrupt their communication networks. This approach aimed to create confusion and disarray within the Zentari ranks, allowing human forces to gain the upper hand in critical sectors. General Emily Harris, the architect of Operation Dawnlight, presented the plan to the United Earth Coalition's top military leadership. Our analysis indicates that the Zantari's strength lies in their ability to efficiently coordinate large-scale operations. By disrupting their command structure, we can significantly reduce their operational effectiveness and create opportunities for our forces to strike, she explained. The first phase of Operation Dawnlight involved cyber attacks on Zentari communications satellites and data hubs. A team of cyber warfare specialists, led by Captain Rajiv Chin, conducted the operations from a secure location on Mars. Team, this is it. Our mission is to infiltrate the Zentari's communication network and plant false orders and information. Success here will pave the way for the rest of Operation Dawnlight. Let's make it count, Captain Chen briefed his team. Simultaneously, special operations units carried out precision strikes on Zentari outposts, using the chaos caused by the cyber attacks to their advantage. One such operation was led by Lieutenant Aisha Rodriguez, who commanded a small team tasked with sabotaging a Zentari supply depot. As soon as we're in, we plant the explosives and get out. Timing is critical, we need to hit them hard and fast before they even realize what's happening, Lieutenant Rodriguez instructed her team. The combined effect of the cyber attacks and physical strikes put the Zentari forces on the defensive for the first time in the war. Reports of confusion and conflicting orders among the Zentari ranks began to emerge, indicating the success of the misinformation campaign. In the wake of the initial successes of Operation Dawnlight, the human military launched a major offensive in the Beetle Sector, a strategically important region that had been under Zentari control. Admiral Sophia Lee led the fleet, comprising the latest human warships equipped with advanced propulsion and weaponry developed in response to the Zentari threat. Today, we take the fight to them. The Beetle Sector is key to cutting off their supply lines and giving us a strategic foothold. Remember, the element of surprise is on our side. Let's make it count, Admiral Lee addressed her fleet. The Battle of Beetle Sector turned out to be one of the largest and most decisive engagements of the war. The human fleet, utilizing guerrilla tactics and leveraging the confusion sown by Operation Dawnlight, managed to outmaneuver the Zentari forces, securing a significant victory. The news of the victory in the Beetle sector spread rapidly across human worlds, boosting morale and fostering a renewed sense of hope. Public rallies and celebrations took place, with citizens and soldiers alike sensing a shift in the war's momentum. In an address to the United Earth Coalition, President Maria Alvarez reflected on the significance of the recent victories. The courage and ingenuity of our forces have brought us to a turning point in this conflict. Operation Dawnlight has demonstrated that, despite the odds, we can and will prevail. Let us continue to stand united and push forward to secure our future, she proclaimed. The success of Operation Dawnlight and the victory in the Beetle Sector marked a critical juncture in the war against the Zentari. For the first time, the possibility of defeating the Zentari seemed within reach as human forces continued to build on their newfound momentum, setting the stage for the next phase of the conflict. As the tide of the war began to turn in favor of humanity, the Zentari Empire found itself in an increasingly precarious position. The effectiveness of Operation Dawnlight and the loss of the Beetle Sector had significantly disrupted their strategic plans, leading to a sense of desperation within the Zentari High Command. In an emergency meeting of the Zentari leadership, Commander Varek addressed the dire situation. Our forces are being outmaneuvered and our command structure has been compromised. We must consider all available options to regain the upper hand, including strategies we have previously set aside, he stated. The Zentari High Command debated various extreme measures, including the deployment of experimental weapons and the consideration of targeting civilian populations to demoralize humanity. 
The ethical implications of such actions caused divisions among the Zentari leaders. Admiral Zirin, a senior member of the Zentari military, voiced his concerns. While we must explore every option to secure victory, we cannot lose sight of our principles. Targeting civilians would not only be morally reprehensible but could also unite our enemies against us more firmly, he argued. Despite the ethical debates, the Zentari leadership decided to proceed with the deployment of a powerful experimental weapon known as the Dark Wave. This weapon was designed to disrupt electronic systems and could potentially disable entire fleets, but its effects were unpredictable and potentially catastrophic. The decision to deploy the Dark Wave was not taken lightly. Scientists and engineers within the Zentari Empire had warned of the weapon's untested nature and the unknown consequences of its use. Dr. Kellen, the lead scientist on the project, expressed his reservations during a briefing with the military command. The Dark Wave could give us a significant advantage, but its effects are not fully understood. There is a risk of collateral damage, and the long-term implications for affected systems are unknown, Dr. Kellen cautioned. Despite these warnings, the Zentari High Command, driven by desperation, authorized a covert operation to deploy the Dark Wave against a human fleet assembled near the Tarsus Nebula. The operation was led by Commander Jalek, who understood the gravity of the mission. This is our chance to turn the tide of the war. But we must proceed with caution. The Dark Wave is a weapon like no other. Success depends on precise execution and control, Commander Jalek briefed his crew. The deployment of the Dark Wave marked a significant escalation in the war. When activated near the Tarsus Nebula, the weapon emitted a powerful energy pulse that disrupted the human fleet's electronic systems, leaving many ships adrift and vulnerable. The immediate tactical advantage was clear, but the long-term consequences of the weapon's use began to emerge soon after. Reports of malfunctions and system failures began to surface from both Centauri and human-controlled sectors, indicating that the Dark Wave's effects were more widespread and uncontrollable than anticipated. The Zentari Empire's gamble had achieved a short-term victory, but at the cost of escalating the conflict and introducing new risks to the galaxy. The use of the Dark Wave and the targeting of human fleets sparked outrage among the United Earth Coalition and its allies. Diplomatic channels, previously open to negotiation, became strained and calls for retribution against the Zentari grew louder. In a broadcast to the citizens of the United Earth Coalition, President Alvarez addressed the situation. The Zentari's use of indiscriminate weapons represents a dangerous escalation in this conflict. We must remain steadfast and united in the face of this new threat. Our resolve will be our shield and our commitment to justice will guide our response, she declared. The Zentari's desperation had led them to take extreme measures that not only threatened the stability of the galaxy, but also undermined their standing among potential allies. The war had entered a new phase, characterized by increased volatility and uncertainty, with both sides reassessing their strategies in the face of these developments. In response to the escalating threat posed by the Zentari's use of the Dark Wave weapon, the United Earth Coalition planned a bold and decisive military operation aimed at ending the war. The operation, codenamed Liberty Strike, targeted the Zentari's primary military stronghold in the Orion Sector, a heavily fortified system that served as the command center for their war efforts. General Harris, who had been instrumental in the success of Operation Dawnlight, led the planning of Liberty Strike. In a high-level briefing with coalition military leaders, she outlined the operation's objectives. Liberty Strike is designed to deliver a crippling blow to the Zentari's military capabilities. By taking out their stronghold, we can effectively end their ability to wage war and force them to the negotiating table, she explained. The operation involved a multi-pronged assault combining space and ground forces. The space assault would engage Zentari fleets and defenses, creating an opening for special forces teams to infiltrate the stronghold and neutralize key targets. Admiral Lee, who had led the fleet to victory in the Beetle Sector, was chosen to command the space assault. Our fleet will face heavy resistance, but we have the element of surprise and superior tactics on our side. 
We will break through their defenses and secure orbit for our ground forces, she stated confidently during the fleet's final preparation. On the ground, Lieutenant Rodriguez, now promoted to captain, led one of the special forces teams tasked with infiltrating the stronghold. Before deployment, she addressed her team, emphasizing the importance of their mission. This is more than just another operation. We're here to end this war and save lives. Stay sharp, stick to the plan, and we'll make it through, she motivated her team. The assault began with a surprise attack on Zentari outer defenses, catching them off guard and allowing human forces to penetrate deeper into the Orion sector. As the space battle raged, special forces teams, including Captain Rodriguez's unit, were deployed to the surface. The ground operation faced intense resistance, with Centauri forces determined to defend their stronghold. Despite the challenges, human forces demonstrated remarkable bravery and resilience. Captain Rodriguez's team successfully disabled a critical power relay, causing chaos within the Zentari defense network and allowing coalition forces to advance. Meanwhile, in space, Admiral Lee's fleet engaged the Zentari in a fierce battle. Despite being outnumbered, the human fleet utilized advanced tactics and coordination to outmaneuver the Zentari ships. Focus fire on their capital ships and keep our fighters on those defense satellites. We need to keep the pressure on, Admiral Lee commanded during the battle. The turning point came when a coordinated strike by human forces took out the Zentari's command center, significantly disrupting their ability to coordinate their defenses. With their command structure in disarray, the Zentari forces began to falter. As the battle neared its end, General Harris monitored the operation from Coalition Command. The success of Liberty Strike was becoming evident, and she prepared to make an announcement. Today, our forces have achieved a significant victory against the Zentari. Their stronghold in the Orion Sector is under our control, and their ability to wage war has been severely compromised, she announced, marking a pivotal moment in the conflict. The success of Liberty Strike was celebrated across human territories, with many seeing it as the beginning of the end of the war. The operation's success had not only dealt a significant blow to the Zentari's military capabilities but also demonstrated the effectiveness of human ingenuity and determination in the face of adversity. In the aftermath of the assault, the United Earth Coalition called for peace talks, hoping to capitalize on the weakened state of the Zentari and bring an end to the conflict. The war had taken a heavy toll but the possibility of peace finally seemed within reach. Following the decisive victory of the United Earth Coalition in the Orion Sector, the Zentari Empire found itself in a weakened state, unable to sustain the war effort. The loss of their primary military stronghold and the subsequent disarray within their command structure forced the Zentari leadership to reconsider their position. In a historic move, the Zentari High Command initiated contact with the United Earth Coalition to discuss terms of surrender. The communication was received at Coalition Command, where General Harris and her team were preparing for the next phase of military operations. We have received a communication from the Zentari High Command. They are requesting a ceasefire and wish to discuss terms of surrender, an aide reported to General Harris. The news of the Zentari's request for peace talks spread quickly, generating a mix of disbelief and cautious optimism among the human population and military personnel. The possibility of ending the war, which had seemed distant just months before, was now becoming a reality. General Harris convened a meeting with coalition military leaders and diplomats to discuss the Zentari's proposal. This could be the opportunity we've been waiting for to end this conflict. But we must approach these talks with caution and ensure that the terms of surrender protect our interests and security, she advised. The peace talks were held on a neutral space station, chosen for its location in an uninhabited system. Representatives from the United Earth Coalition, including General Harris and Ambassador Kim, met with the Zentari delegation, led by Commander Varek. As the talks began, Commander Varek addressed the human representatives. The Zentari Empire acknowledges its defeat and seeks an end to hostilities. We are prepared to discuss the terms of our surrender with the hope of preserving what remains of our civilization, he stated solemnly. 
The negotiations were lengthy and complex, with both sides seeking to secure favorable outcomes. Key issues included the disarmament of Zentari forces, the future governance of Zentari territories, and reparations for the destruction caused by the war. After several days of intense discussions, an agreement was reached. The terms of surrender included the complete disarmament of the Zentari military, the establishment of a coalition-led administration in Zentari territories to oversee the transition, and a commitment from the Zentari to contribute to reconstruction efforts. General Harris addressed the coalition forces and the human population to announce the end of the war. Today, we mark the end of a conflict that has tested our resolve and our humanity. The Zentari Empire has formally surrendered and we will now work towards building a lasting peace. This victory is a testament to the courage and determination of every person who stood up to defend our way of life, she proclaimed. The formal surrender ceremony was held on the neutral space station with representatives from the United Earth Coalition, the Zentari Empire, and other galactic entities as witnesses. The Zentari signed the official documents, sealing the end of the war. The news of the surrender was met with widespread relief and jubilation across human territories. Public gatherings and celebrations occurred on many worlds, with people coming together to mark the end of the war and to honor those who had sacrificed their lives. In the aftermath of the surrender, the focus shifted to the reconstruction of war-torn regions and the integration of Zentari territories into a new galactic order. The war had ended, but the task of building a lasting peace was just beginning. Following the formal surrender of the Zentari Empire, the next phase of the peace process involved the occupation and administration of Zentari territories by the United Earth Coalition. This period was crucial for ensuring the stability of the region and laying the groundwork for a peaceful coexistence. The coalition established an interim administrative body known as the Transitional Authority for Zentari Territories, TZT, tasked with overseeing the disarmament of Zentari forces, the restoration of basic services, and the initiation of reconstruction projects. General Harris, who had played a pivotal role in the war's conclusion, was appointed to lead the TZT. In her first address as head of the TZT, General Harris outlined the objectives of the occupation. Our mission is to ensure a smooth transition to a stable and peaceful governance structure. We are here not as conquerors, but as facilitators of peace and reconstruction. Our success will be measured by our ability to return sovereignty to the Zentari people in a manner that ensures lasting peace, she stated. One of the first actions of the TZT was to secure and decommission Zentari military installations. Special disarmament units, composed of both human and Zentari personnel, were formed to oversee this process. Captain Rodriguez, now a key member of the TZT, led one of these units. During a disarmament operation, Captain Rodriguez met with a Zentari military officer, Commander Tellen, to discuss the process. We understand the sensitivity of this operation. Our goal is to proceed with respect for your people's sovereignty while ensuring the terms of the surrender are fully implemented, she explained to Commander Tellen. The TZT also focused on rebuilding infrastructure and restoring essential services that had been devastated by the war. Human and Zentari engineers worked together on projects ranging from repairing power grids to rebuilding schools and hospitals. Dr. Kellen, the Zentari scientist who had previously expressed reservations about the dark wave weapon, now contributed his expertise to the reconstruction efforts. Collaborating on these projects has opened a path for mutual understanding and respect. We are learning from each other and working towards a common goal, he remarked during a project review meeting. The occupation also involved complex political processes, including the establishment of local councils to represent Centauri communities in the transitional governance structure. Ambassador Kim led the diplomatic efforts to engage with various Centauri factions and ensure their participation in the political process. In a meeting with Centauri community leaders, Ambassador Kim emphasized the importance of inclusive governance. Your involvement is essential for building a governance structure that reflects the diverse voices of the Zentari people. 
We encourage open and constructive dialogue as we move forward, he encouraged the leaders. Despite these efforts, the occupation faced challenges, including resistance from Zantari factions opposed to the presence of coalition forces. Incidents of unrest and protests occurred in some regions, highlighting the complexities of administering formerly hostile territories. General Harris addressed these challenges in a briefing with TZT officials. We must remain vigilant and committed to our principles of peace and reconciliation. Addressing grievances and fostering dialogue will be key to overcoming these challenges, she advised. As the occupation progressed, the focus on collaboration and mutual respect began to yield positive results. Joint humanitarian and reconstruction initiatives brought human and Zentari communities closer, laying the foundation for a more harmonious coexistence. The period of occupation marked the beginning of a new chapter in human Zentari relations characterized by cautious optimism and the shared goal of building a peaceful future. The challenges were significant, but the collaborative spirit between the two species offered hope for a successful transition. As the transitional authority for Zentari territories, TZT continued its efforts to stabilize and rebuild the Zentari regions, the process of reconciliation between humans and Zentari faced both progress and setbacks. While many embraced the opportunity for peace and collaboration, elements of resistance among the Zentari population persisted, fueled by lingering resentment and a desire for autonomy. Efforts to foster reconciliation were embodied in initiatives such as the Joint Reconciliation and Reconstruction Program, JRRP, which aimed to involve both human and Zentari communities in rebuilding projects. Ambassador Kim and Commander Tellen co-chaired the JRRP, symbolizing the partnership between the two species. During a JRRP meeting, Ambassador Kim addressed the participants, emphasizing the importance of their work. Through collaboration on these projects, we're not just rebuilding infrastructure, we are laying the foundation for a future built on mutual respect and understanding, he said. Commander Tellen echoed this sentiment, acknowledging the challenges ahead, there are those among us who question this path, who cling to old grievances. It's our responsibility to prove that a better future is possible through cooperation, he stated. Despite these positive efforts, incidents of resistance highlighted the fragility of the peace process. In some areas, Zentari groups organized protests against the TZT, calling for the immediate withdrawal of human forces and the restoration of full sovereignty to the Zentari people. One such protest in a major Zentari city turned tense when demonstrators clashed with TZT security personnel. Captain Rodriguez, present at the scene, worked to de-escalate the situation. We understand your concerns and your right to express them. Let's find a peaceful way to address these issues together, she urged the protesters. The resistance also took the form of a more organized movement, known as the Zentari Sovereignty Front, CSF, which conducted operations against TAZT installations and personnel. The ZSF claimed responsibility for several sabotage incidents, stating their actions were in defense of Zantari independence. General Harris convened a meeting with TAZT security and intelligence officials to assess the threat posed by the ZSF. Our priority is to protect civilians and maintain stability. We need to understand the root causes of this resistance and address them without resorting to heavy-handed tactics, she instructed. Efforts to engage with the ZSF and other resistant factions were initiated with the goal of bringing them into the political process and addressing their grievances through dialogue rather than force. Ambassador Kim played a key role in these diplomatic efforts, meeting with representatives of various factions in a series of negotiations. During one such meeting, Ambassador Kim listened to the concerns of a ZSF representative. Your demands for sovereignty are heard, but violence only undermines the prospect of a peaceful resolution. Let's work together to find a solution that respects the rights and aspirations of the Zentari people, he proposed. The path to reconciliation was further supported by cultural exchange programs designed to foster understanding and build personal connections between humans and Zentari. 
These programs included joint educational initiatives, cultural festivals, and community forums where individuals from both species could share their stories and perspectives. Through these initiatives, moments of genuine connection and understanding began to emerge. A human teacher, Sarah, participating in a joint educational program, shared her experience. Working with Centauri students has been incredibly rewarding. We are learning from each other and breaking down barriers one conversation at a time, she reflected. Despite the challenges posed by resistance, the combined efforts of TAZT, diplomatic channels, and grassroots initiatives contributed to a gradual shift in attitudes. The process of reconciliation was slow and complex, but the commitment to peace and mutual respect offered a glimmer of hope for a harmonious future. As the initial phase of the occupation by the Transitional Authority for Zentari Territories TAZT, progressed, signs of true coexistence between humans and Zentari began to emerge, gradually transforming the post-war landscape into a model of interspecies collaboration and mutual respect. One of the most significant milestones in this journey was the establishment of the Human Zentari Coexistence Council, HCCC, a body designed to facilitate dialogue, resolve conflicts, and guide the joint efforts of reconstruction and societal integration. The HCCC comprised equal numbers of human and Zentari representatives, each committed to fostering a shared future. In the inaugural session of the HCCC, co-chair General Harris addressed the council members. This council represents a new chapter in our shared history. Here, we sit as equals dedicated to the prosperity and well-being of all our people. Let's work together with the spirit of cooperation and openness, she stated. Co-chair Commander Tellen, representing the Zentari side, echoed the sentiment. Our past has been marked by conflict, but our future will be defined by the peace we build together. The HCCC is a testament to our commitment to coexistence and mutual understanding, he added. One of the Council's first initiatives was the Community Integration Program, CIP, aimed at promoting interaction and friendship between human and Zentari communities. The program included cultural exchange events, language learning courses, and joint community service projects. Sarah, the human teacher who had previously participated in a joint educational program, now led a CIP project in a mixed human Zentari neighborhood. Today, we're coming together to revitalize this community park. It's more than just planting trees. It's about planting the seeds of friendship and cooperation, she explained to the group of human and Zentari volunteers. The economic integration also played a crucial role in fostering coexistence. Joint ventures between human and Zentari businesses flourished, driven by complementary strengths and shared goals. One such venture was a technology firm specializing in advanced agricultural systems co-founded by Dr. Kellen and a human entrepreneur, Michael. During a conference on economic development, Michael shared the success story of their partnership. Our collaboration has not only resulted in innovative solutions but has also built a bridge between our communities. Together, we're achieving more than we ever could separately, he highlighted. Challenges to coexistence remained, particularly in areas with deep-seated prejudices and mistrust. The HCCC and TAZT worked closely to address these issues, implementing education campaigns and conflict resolution mechanisms to heal the wounds of the past. In one instance, a dispute between human and Zentari neighbors threatened to escalate into violence. The HCCC intervened, facilitating a mediation session that allowed both parties to voice their grievances and work towards a resolution. It's important to listen and understand each other's perspectives. Only then can we move forward, remarked the mediator, a Zentari psychologist specializing in intercultural relations. As coexistence efforts continued, the stories of friendships and collaborations between humans and Zentari became increasingly common, highlighting the transformative power of empathy and shared purpose. A documentary series featuring these stories became popular across human and Zentari territories, inspiring more individuals to engage in cross-cultural interactions. 
The journey towards coexistence was not without its difficulties, but the progress made by the HCCC, TZT, and the individuals committed to this cause painted a hopeful picture of the future. The once war-torn regions were now becoming beacons of diversity and cooperation, showcasing the potential for harmony between different species. The formal end of the occupation and the establishment of a new, joint human centauri governing body marked the beginning of a new era. This period was characterized by a cautious optimism for a peaceful and collaborative future as both species worked to heal the wounds of the past and build a shared vision for the galaxy. The new governing body, known as the Galactic Council of Harmony, GCH, was inaugurated in a ceremony attended by representatives from various human and Zentari communities as well as delegates from other galactic civilizations. The GCH was based on principles of equality, mutual respect, and shared responsibility with the aim of preventing future conflicts and promoting prosperity across all member territories. In her opening address to the GCH, General Harris, now serving as one of the human representatives, reflected on the journey that led to this moment. The path to peace has been long and fraught with challenges. Yet, here we stand, united in our commitment to a future where cooperation and understanding guide our actions. Let this council be a testament to what we can achieve together, she stated. Commander Tellen, representing the Zentari, echoed these sentiments. The war taught us the futility of conflict and the value of peace. As members of this council, we pledge to uphold its ideals and work tirelessly to ensure the prosperity of all civilizations under its guidance, he declared. The GCH's first initiatives focused on galactic reconstruction and development, addressing the lingering effects of the war and ensuring that all member territories had access to the resources and support needed for recovery. Projects included the establishment of interstellar trade routes, the development of joint scientific research programs, and cultural exchange initiatives designed to foster a deeper understanding and appreciation of the diverse civilizations within the galaxy. Ambassador Kim, now serving as the GCH's Secretary for Diplomatic Relations, emphasized the importance of open communication and collaboration. Our strength lies in our diversity and our willingness to listen and learn from each other. By embracing our differences and working together, we can face any challenge that comes our way, he noted during a council meeting. The transition to this new era was not without its difficulties. Lingering mistrust and unresolved grievances from the war required continuous effort to address and reconcile. The GCH established a Commission for Peace and Reconciliation, tasked with investigating war crimes, facilitating dialogue between affected communities, and promoting healing and forgiveness. One of the Commission's initiatives was the creation of memorials on both human and Centauri worlds, dedicated to the victims of the war and serving as a reminder of the cost of conflict. At the unveiling of one such memorial, a human artist, Sarah, who had worked on the project, shared her thoughts. This memorial is a place for reflection and remembrance. It symbolizes our shared loss and our collective hope for a future where such tragedies are never repeated, she said. As the new era unfolded, the galaxy witnessed the emergence of a more interconnected and cooperative civilization. The GCH's efforts led to significant advancements in technology, science, and culture, benefiting all member species. The scars of the war remained, but they served as a reminder of the past's lessons and the importance of safeguarding the hard-won peace. The inauguration of the GCH and the initiatives that followed represented the dawn of a new era in galactic history. An era where the potential for conflict is recognized and addressed through dialogue and cooperation and where the aspirations of all civilizations can be pursued in harmony. This new era was not just the end of a dark chapter in human and Zentari history, it was the beginning of a shared journey towards a brighter future.